I had just arrived at my apartment after a night out with friends where I received some, to be frank, well, I'm Joe, hi, devastating news. See, I found out through the grapevine that my girlfriend of over two years apparently had the libido of JFK and Bill Clinton combined. I was unaware of this, but plenty of other men had reaped the reward of that knowledge. She called me while I was out and confessed to her follies. I hung up on her and told my friends I needed to go home because I had sharded. I didn't want to tell them the truth because I was dumbfounded. I was flabbergasted. I was, insert big word here. I just wanted to get back to my happy place. But if only I knew. Are you done yet with this never-ending story? Don't start. Well, I'll stop starting when you start stopping. Okay, can we ever do this where you don't act like an asshat? No! Because you always conjure me up in situations that make my blood boil. Like, right now. Why can't you just let this go? I'm tired of reliving one of our most painful memories. So you know what? If I want to give you the middle finger with my words, then I will, old man. Only nine years older than you, but fine. That's almost a whole decade. Don't! All right, I went back to my bedroom, hideous hippie hair and all. Huh? I was drained. I just wanted a glass of Bosco and slip under my blankets. But my soon-to-be ex-girl fiend wanted to go round two on the phone. I'd regret answering. I'm sorry. I think you dialed the wrong number. Is your pimp also named Joe? <laughs> I forgot about that. Look, I think you've told me enough for one night. I don't care about whatever else you have to tell me. What? What, you, you want to confess about more guys to me? No. What, was it a slow day at the office? <laughs> Fine, say your piece. She apologized profusely and declared her love for me, but no longer saw a future for us because I was a loser. All I focused on was her, and apparently that wasn't fair. She wasn't the answer, and I still had a lot to figure out, or I'd be stuck in my own self-made purgatory until my hair fell out. Still got my hair. Her assassination of my character ended with her wishing it hadn't gone down this way, and hoped I understood that she was only being so honest to help me. In hindsight, she was right, but in that moment, surprisingly, I didn't see it that way. Well, do you feel better? Because, I mean, that's what's certainly important here. No, I'm, I'm not angry. Why would you think that I was angry? I mean, why? Just because a bunch of other guys got to touch... You know, even though you love me so much. Or that earlier you were you know, so kind to call me a loser to try to help me. That was fun. You know what? To my surprise, I think you actually are right about something. You're not the answer. And now, I have nothing. You know what, uh, you, you've told me a lot today, so can you please tell me something else? What am I supposed to do now? What the fuck am I supposed to do now?
as I laid there on my bedroom floor, tears streaming and snot bubbles coming out of my nose, I couldn't remember feeling so confused and lost. Well, except for once. Out of nowhere, a memory dug its way out of the deepest recesses of my brain, and all I could think about was when I was five years old, and I had to stop sucking my thumb. Wait, what? Okay, I'll return to the human snot machine a little bit later on, but for now, I really want to figure out why such a random recall popped into my noggin at such an inopportune moment. I mean, I'm 33 years old now, and I still don't get it. And there has to be an answer, right? There has to be. In order for me to understand it, I suppose I need to look back on my life, and maybe I'll be able to figure this out. I guess I need to start at the beginning. And nothing is more beginning y -er than with a birth. My birth. I have a lot of tales to tell, and each one are vital to my story. Here we go. That's it. Ages zero through four are a mystery to me, lost in the ether of infancy, I suppose. But I do know that my parents, or my mom and dad, yeah, dad, I don't think so. There you go. Of course, there was me. Okay, wait. I've always wanted to say this, my parents should have been arrested for child abuse for allowing that haircut. And I also had a big sister who... Where is she? I don't know. Okay, five Joe, five me. Go find her, we need her, come on. little dick. There's a little bit of an age difference between me and my sister, and around this time she would have been a teenager, so she was... Hey big sis, can you please come with... <laughs> a very angry young woman. I'm also aware that I derided great pleasure in sucking my thumb. It was my first happy place. Shoving that appendage into my mouth hole made me feel safe. I really should have worded that differently. By five, however, the meddling bastards I call La Familia, which is French, were trying to get me to stop. No. 
Also around this time, my papa had a massive heart attack after decades of trying to master his impersonation of a chimney. What's wrong with you? I'm having a heart attack. What? Get an ambulance, please. Okay, fine, I'll okay. call one, but maybe you should give me the cigarette, huh? No. No. This helps. He barely survived, but couldn't kick the habit. Nobody could get him to stop. Not even my Nana. I swear to God, I'm gonna hit you upside the head with something. You need to quit smoking right now. I love you more than anything, honey. But I'm not giving up smoking. What are you gonna do with that rolling pin? Ow. Can you get me another cigarette, honey? Then one day we were visiting and I happened to wander into his office. There he was, puffing away like there was no tomorrow. And it kind of made me angry. But then I noticed that he looked like I did when I sucked my thumb. He was in his happy place too. This is my earliest memory. Hi, Papa. Well, hi, Joey. <coughs> I guess you're still smoking, huh? I guess I am. <laughs> I see you're still sucking your thumb. I guess. <sighs> you're getting a little old for that, aren't you? I don't know. Well, eventually it's going to cause more harm than good, Joey. Um, isn't that what cigarettes are doing to you? Hmm. How old do you have to be to stop smoking, Papa? That's a good question, Joey. I know. I'll tell you what. How about we make a deal? You put your thumb-sucking days behind you, and I'll quit sucking down these cigarettes. We got a deal? <laughs> Give up sucking my thumb? He must have mistaken his cancer sticks for some Mary Janes that day, because there was no way. There was no way I was going to stop shoving my thumb into my face. I didn't want that to change. But... I sure wanted my papa to live for a long time. Joey. You have to promise. Well... I think I have the harder road ahead of me, but... Okay. I promise. <laughs> okay. And so did he. No cigarette ever touched his lips again. Neither did my thumb to mine. When he died in 2006, I wished I had more time with him, but I was thankful for the extra we got because of our deal. And it helped me out too. I had to grow up. At his funeral, I walked up to his casket and let him know that I kept my promise. Thanks, Papa. After the great thumb shortage of 91, I felt like a part of me was gone that I'd never get back. Okay, I can be dramatic, but I definitely wasn't the same. However, I was a happy kid, and that had a lot to do with my family. The only thing I felt was missing was a dog. Dog? And I had begged my parents for weeks and weeks to get a dog. And today, this day, we were finally gonna have a family meeting about it. I was so excited. Oh, I couldn't wait. Everything was right as rain. Well, shit. See, I had heard my parents arguing through the walls for months about something that started with a D. What else besides dog starts with D? I even told Big Sis about it. Hey, Big Sis, guess what I heard? 
Well, I tried to. I walked into the living room for our family meeting, and I saw my solemn-looking parents sitting next to each other, and... I don't know, they just seemed miles apart. Big Sis seemed angry as usual, but she still didn't know about the dog. <laughs> sis, cheer up! We're getting a dog- Okay. <laughs> it's amazing I remember any of this. Okay, um... Your dad and I have something very important to tell both of you. Um, look, we both love you very, very much. I just couldn't contain my excitement. I love you too. Now where's that dog? He thinks he's getting a dog? Joey, what are you talking about? Where is the little fella? This is the best day ever. Shut up, Joey. You're not getting a dog. That's a bunch of crap. They're getting a divorce. Oh, what can I say? I, I was shocked. I mean, this was the first time my sister ever spoke to me. Why does Joey think he's getting a dog? I don't know. Joey, honey, your sister's right. Your dad and I are getting a divorce. We won't be married anymore, sweetie. I couldn't comprehend what they were saying. I think like most kids, I was an idiot. And I figured, you know, my parents had the perfect marriage. Not only was I not getting a dog, but nothing would be the same. Again. We all started crying like we had just seen a Tommy Wiseau movie. My parents consoled us both, but all I could think about was, where would I go? Who am I gonna live with? Well, we're still deciding that, Joey. Because you both want me, right? Oh, honey. Tell yourself whatever you need to. We could flip a coin or something. And that's exactly what happened. No, no it's not. not. It was a joke. So my parents divorced, and my sister was able to escape to college to punch some fresh new faces. <laughs> Poor bastards. For a year, I just lived in a constant state of fog. My only solace was watching movies with my dad. His love of movies became our love of movies. And it helped, but both of my parents could tell that I was just lost. One day, my mom came up to me and asked me if I wanted to go to therapy with her, and I said no. She respected my decision. You're going. Yeah. <sighs> oh, shit. Look, I don't remember what this guy looks like, so I'll just play him. <sighs> what? So I'm you when I grow up? I'm glad I'm in therapy. Yeah, well, those glasses really make your dumbass hair look better. <sighs> anyway. You don't want to be here, do you, Joey? Sure don't. Glad we cleared that up, Doc. You're angry, and you spent six figures on a piece of paper so you could just point out the obvious. You're deflecting. Deflect this! Stop that! What, sis can do it all the time, but I can't? I don't know what to do anymore. You just stay in your room, and when you do come out, you barely talk? It's obvious that you're upset. You're angry. And I get it. I get it if you hate us, Joey. I don't hate you, Mom. Or Dad. 
I love you both. I, I know you just brought me here to try to help me. I feel like growing up means having to give up chunks of your life that made you happy. I know I'm angry. It's because I... I just feel lost. Oh, honey. Joe. Uh, can I call you Joe? Yes, getting older means having to leave chunks of your life behind, but you don't forget about them. They're always going to be up here. However, you do have to move past them. If you don't, then you're not going to become the person that you're supposed to be. Plus, the future might be better. I mean, isn't that worth the pain of change? Tell you what, I think I know what'll help you. I want you to start keeping a journal. Write in it every single day. Write about what? About whatever you want. Be creative. Go nuts. It might actually help you figure out some unanswered questions. What do you think, Mom? I think it's a great idea, Joey. After this, we'll go to the store and grab some pens and notebooks, okay? Thanks, Mom. To this day, I don't know why that therapist suggested writing, but the moment I got home and put pen to paper, I didn't stop. For four years, I filled up notebook after notebook after notebook with short stories, movie scripts, whatever I could think of. For the first time since the divorce, I felt good about life. I was happy, but now I was a teenager and about to start high school. The head up top was better than ever, but the one down below would soon be calling and making all the shots. Pun intended. During my teenage years, all I could think about was sex, so writing took a back seat. I basically thought that if I found a void to fill, then it would fill mine as well. I really need to work on how I word things. So I cast my line out to the dating pool, but no girl wanted my bait. And to this day, I still don't get it. Okay, I get it. So yeah, the only person who was interested in touching my most private of privates was moi, Spanish. And it's, it's embarrassing to talk about this, but it's the truth of what happened. I want to be polite in talking about this, so I'll call it, I, I really got into shining my shoes. I loved shining my shoes. I would do it every single day. Hell, multiple times if I had the stamina. Even today I shine my shoes if the mood strikes. And that's really all I did for four years of high school. Oh God. It was a joke. But right before I graduated high school, I was 18 and it finally happened. A woman came along and was kind enough to take away my virgin stigma. It was wonderful. It really was. And this was basically my face throughout. But the funniest part to me is that we did it and my dad was right next door. Our bedrooms were right beside each other. And to this day, he says that he never heard a thing. He had no clue. And I believe him, but I think it's funnier to think that this is what happened. After four long years, I had finally climbed the mountaintops. But afterward, I felt empty. I quickly realized that all these years had passed, and what did I gain? I mean, what answers did I get? I had no idea who I was. Which is exactly where you want to be once you're out of high school.
I had just barely, and I mean barely graduated high school. I had no idea what I wanted my future to be. So I did what most 18 year olds would do when they come to a crossroads in their young life. I ignored it. After my escape from K through 12 jail, all I did for three months was watch movies and eat my weight in junk food. It was the best three months of my life. But the fun was cut short when responsibility used my dad as a conduit to get my ass in gear. Son, wake up. <laughs> to be fair, my mom and dad had let this go on long enough. Your mom and I have let this go on long enough. See? What time is it? 6 p.m. Why are you waking me up so early? Just, just sit up, please. I'm gonna sit next to you. Okay, you need to take off that fake beard now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's to show my angst, Dad. Fine. Ruin all my fun. See? I told you I could be dramatic. When I looked over at my dad, he seemed lost in thought. I wondered what this was all about. Ooh, maybe I was finally getting that dog. I know that you didn't like school and that it was difficult for you. Maybe you'll like college more, you know? And then again, maybe you won't. Well, that cleared it up. Just be honest with me, okay? Do you want to go to college or not? It was a question I had dreaded for a long time because I didn't know. I had no answer. In that moment, I just went with what my gut was telling me. Joey. I don't want to go to college, Dad. That much I know. But besides that, I have no idea what I want. I feel lost, Dad. I'm sorry, sweetie. But that's okay. We'll help you out in any way that we can, but it's up to you to figure out who you are and what you want out of life. You'll figure it out, though. I know it. Thanks, Dad. Now, since you're not going to college, you're gonna have to get a job. A job? A job, you say? Oh, well, that actually kind of made sense. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I'll get a job. Good, son, I'm glad to hear it. Because if you don't, your mother and I are going to kill you. I'm not kidding. She's out buying a shovel right now. He make a decision yet? Jesus! He did. Our son will be entering the workforce. <sighs> That's right, Mom. I'm so proud of you, honey. I'll keep this just in case. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. No, it's it was a fucking joke. So I got a job in the fabulous world of retail. Hey loser, where's the milk section? Hey dropout, I want to speak to a manager. I still can't find the milk section. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry. Your long hair makes you look like a girl. Did I say fabulous? I meant soul-crushing. I just worked and watched movies. I was unhappy, but at least I was also... angry. Don't worry, kids. I got out of retail hell eventually. <laughs> A few months after I got my job, my big sis wanted to take me to my first film festival since I love movies so much, and seemed happier than ever. Especially since she moved in with a girlfriend of hers. We were actually having a wonderful time, and we were bonding. But then she decided to hit me with one of the worst transitions in the history of conversation. 
Look, I, I just wanted to say thank you. This has been the best day of my life. I'm glad, Joey. You're welcome. So do you think that it's weird that I'm living with a girl now? Well, what the hell was I supposed to do with that? I mean, was this a trick question? If I answered wrong, would I get punched in the face like when we were kids? Was this a ploy just so she could punch me in the face? I didn't want to get punched in the face. My glasses would break. What then? She'd leave me there, I'd be blind, I'd never be able to find my way home, and I'd die. Good job, big sis. You just killed me. Joey. Huh? Oh, uh... No, I, I don't think it's weird at all. I mean, I have a male roommate, and that doesn't make me get... Go ahead. It doesn't mean that you're what? Is it... Is it nothing. Is it, sometimes words don't come out of my face good. <laughs> Sis? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gay. No, no. No, I, I, I didn't mean gay. I meant I'm... I'm gay, Joey. Oh. She then told me everything. She knew that she'd been gay since a pretty young age, but was scared to accept it. So she ran from it, and didn't know who she was for a long time. She was so lost, and it made her angry and lash out at people she loved. She now knew who she was and was telling everyone regardless of how they felt. My sister was finally who she was supposed to be, and I could tell how at peace she was. So, what do you think? I think it's great, sis. I really do. I'm just happy that you're who you want to be now. I love you. I love you too. I was so proud of her, and I still am, but I couldn't get something out of my mind. Are you okay? I didn't have an answer, so I ignored the question. Uh, have you told your roommate that you're gay? <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, she knew that I was struggling with something, but I don't believe she intended to help me in the way that she did. Thanks, sis. I needed to find out who I was supposed to be. I didn't want to work in retail forever, so what the hell did I want to do? But a year later, I was able to move out and be on my own. I paid my bills, bought my own food, and even my own underwear. So I was a full-fledged adult. I was feeling pretty good about being on my own. I mean, I had a steady, but so crushing <clears throat> job, and realized instead of just watching movies, I would write my own and eventually make it. So I wrote a movie, and I wanted to make it so bad. I wanted to be a filmmaker, but you need something called equipment. So I had to toss that dream aside, <laughs> but, I became a little bit distracted. I had finally found the right girl. I met her one day when she came into where I worked. We locked eyes and she made a beeline towards me. Okay, I blocked her face from my memory, but I do remember that she had red hair and impressive speed. Can you help me? I'm just aching for some service. I'll do my best, ma'am. What can I help you with? I'm looking for a movie. There you go. Thank you, handsome. Yep. Not to be too forward or anything, but you can come over tonight and we can watch it while having sex. Well. I think you just made me an offer I can't refuse. <sighs> I get off in 15. I live 15 minutes away, so looks like I'll be getting off in 30. Oh my. 
<sighs> hey, I got a better idea of where we can go, though. <laughs> now I know he heard that time. After that we got together and I just knew she was the right girl for me. For two years we were inseparable. I had finally found the answer. I was sure of it. I knew that it would last forever. <laughs> yeah. I think we all know that it didn't. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> to say I was decimated would be an understatement. All I kept thinking was, where do I go from here? I had no clue. Actually, that's not true. For three weeks, my rarely vacuumed floor became my not-so-happy place. I just laid there staring at the ceiling and wearing my what I now called beard of burden. One day, I finally sat up, which sadly was progress, and put on a movie. But for once, it didn't help. So, I grabbed, as the Amish say, ye old laptop, and watched a bunch of videos online. It lifted my spirits immensely and inspired me. I didn't need amazing equipment to create, and an idea hit me harder than a Catholic nun brandishing a ruler. I could start making my own online videos. For four years, that's what I did, and pretty much learned my craft. It was a great time. Unfortunately, it didn't lead to much else, and it was time to move on. It felt like it was the end of my creative side, but I decided to thumb through the first screenplay I wrote to try and remember that passion I felt I'd lost. It was, I need to insert a big word here, shit, but reminded me that this was who I was, a filmmaker. But as I celebrated the beginning of my third decade on this rock, something still didn't feel right, go figure. I had to have a conversation with myself, and I finally figured out what I needed to do. It took me three years to come to terms with it, but I'm ready. Today is my last in this apartment. I've lived here now for 13, well, almost 14 years. I've been asked repeatedly why it took me so long to get to this point. If it hasn't become obvious, Change and I have never had a good relationship. It petrified me, and it always felt like I was leaving a part of myself behind. I get now that that's not completely true. You let the unimportant parts fade into the white, and you keep the rest. Still, this became my ultimate happy place. Why would I leave? Well, I realized that if I stayed, I'd do nothing but stagnate. Now, I've known that for a while, but I still couldn't pull the damn trigger. Why? Well, because of him. This moment has been the hardest to shake. So many times I felt like I had nothing and was a fucking loser. Why did this have to happen? I guess just like everything else that's taken place, I wouldn't be standing here right now if it hadn't. Smile because it happened. Was that the answer all along? <laughs> Shit, I still have no idea. However, just like I'm sure that I'll find even more happy places, I'll probably be searching for more answers. I suppose that's the fun of the journey. Or I'm just talking out of my butthole, I'm not sure. <laughs> I am sure of two things though. One, leaving here for the final time is, for lack of a better word, sad. <laughs> but. It's a lot easier than I thought, and I think that's because the actual right girl is out there waiting for me. Second, no matter what, 
this apartment will always be up here in the old noggin. I can come back and visit whenever I want. Hopefully that sounded sentimental and not insane. Thank you for everything. I can't wait to see future me in the mirror one day. Hopefully he hasn't grown that hideous hippie hair again. But I know now that change will happen. But if it sucks, I'll just make it better. Quiet on the set. That's a wrap.